so when you're building startups, this this is really the graph behind every single startup, behind every single idea. Um, that everything starts out as a small idea and it has an exceptionally high amount of risk. And your job is to move along this line, the, the x-axis of reducing the risk. And as you reduce the risk, you increase your valuation. That's how you create value. So as you can kill assumptions, do my customers exist? Do they have this problem? Will they use this solution? Will they pay me for this solution? Is the market big enough? All of those are assumptions that you're killing. And as you kill those assumptions, you're decreasing the risk behind the idea that you're building and hence increasing your valuation. So what should the label be for this x-axis? Time? Any other suggestions? Maybe information or data. Information, data? Cool. Money? Assumptions. Pardon? Assumptions. Assumptions, experience. Yeah, so a natural first thing is to think it's time or to think it's money. And those are mistakes that we make with startup. In gathering information is one part of it, but it's validation. And validation means killed assumptions. And the thing that you need to do is to find the biggest, scariest assumption, the thing that keeps you up at night, and, and kill that. Normal modus operandi for early stage business, let's kill a bunch of assumptions, de-risk this business, I'm gonna hire a team, get an office, do that's all, if you guys have just finished studying, that's work avoidance behavior. You know, that's, I'm not going to do the hard stuff that keeps me up at night. Will people buy cheese on a stick delivered by a drone? Oh, I need a team, I need product, and all you of this stuff. Office, yeah. <laughs> yes, you, 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 you do do a little bit of validation. You know, you show you can hire, you show you can manage. You can, that's not the thing that's going to get you money in the bank with investors. The thing that's going to get you money in the bank with investors is we found out that people love cheese on a stick when it comes to them in a drone. Because it comes to them at the time when they're hungry because we've got their Fitbit that tells them when their sugar's dropping and that thing arrived and we've got happy customers, right? You know, and that can be your first step. And you can do it in a way that doesn't scale. You can, you can pretend to be the drone. Right? <laughs> Ta-da! You know, and you can fake as much as you want, but that's the validation that, that comes through there that people want to buy the thing. And, and so, the number one job of your startup is to increase your valuation because you're looking to raise to up your burn rate to be able to scale. And, and, and a lot of this has come from where people used to think, or in a, in a corporate setting, you design this massive product, you spend all this money, you try and build all these other things without removing your biggest assumption first. And when it fails, they write off a couple of hundred million just for the sake of it. Now, as a startup, that's a very difficult thing to do. Specifically, if you're going to need funding to grow and scale, you're probably going to have to raise that externally from other people. So if you go to someone and say, this is my great business plan, I just need to build this factory and hire 100 people and do all this thing, but you haven't actually done anything, it's going to be very difficult to get that money. Whereas if you can go to them and say, I did this from my kitchen, I built this, I've sold 3,000 of them from my kitchen, I now need a small amount of money to just move into a garage and hire two more people and do this and sell the next 10,000. That becomes a very easy thing to fund and it means that you're gonna get the right kind of funding at the right stages. Because one of the things that kills startups most often is getting the wrong funding at the wrong time. I don't know if no funding or too much. And they build the wrong thing, they go off in the wrong, and, and why too much money is a bad thing is because when you build too much, you, you lose the focus on learning and so you, lo you lose the identity of are you on the right track. And so if you have too much money, you can run for years down a certain path only to realize that you, you actually customer doesn't have that problem. And, and you're kind of running, that batch size is so big that you're running a lot of experiments at the same time. You just don't know what you're running and you don't know what you do. If you imagine, this is science, right? So if you imagine someone conducting experiments in the lab, those high school science experiments, how how long does it take for the thing to fall down to the ground and you want to try different size balls? It's like someone goes, whoa, I've got lots of money, I'm throwing all the balls in the air and they're all landing on the ground, it's awesome. Well, what about that one over there that's made of feathers that doesn't fall as, you know, you're not learning those things because you're doing all those experiments at once, you're like, balls, they're amazing. Uh, <laughs> and look at all the balls I've caught. I'm, I'm so smart, I love beach balls and these things and we're doing all this stuff. And, Whereas if you had enough to do one, you'd then figure out how that thing works and then you could do another one. And so a temporary, temporary organization um, in search of a scalable business model 
is exactly that. It's a learning organization. And, and the, the benefits of staying small and focusing small means that you can focus on finding real problems or finding a real customer problem and validating that's a solution before you spend all the money, before you build all the tech.